Today on Inner Urban Era, we visit one of my clients' layouts, one that I've been hired to help with scenery following the completion of track and bench work. I was asked by one of my first ever clients to come in and help with scenery. He's been my client for over a decade. We started back when I was a teen when he hired me to weather freight cars by the dozen. Many of the cars I weathered then still look great today on his layout. My Livermore client is modeling both sides of the 1996 UPSP merger in the Bay Area, featuring rail fan and operational hotspots like West Oakland, Richmond, Hayward, Livermore, and HO scale. The era is roughly 1994 to 2010. The track plan was developed by another professional layout planner. The layout itself was thankfully already constructed entirely by my client to operational status before I arrived. That allowed me to focus entirely on scenery and what places we wanted to model. In just a few months during the depth of the pandemic, we successfully maintained a COVID bubble and I visited twice a month to do work on the layout. We made great progress each session, transforming the bare section of layout into a vibrant container terminal with a cold storage facility nearby. First up was buying back some of the space from the bulbous backdrop in the plant. We added a significant amount of space back to the container terminal just by transforming it into a flat, double-sided backdrop. Next up was building Pacific Coast Container, a modernist prefab steel cold storage warehouse building built in the mid-1960s that's still receiving carloads of reefers today in 2021. The prototype is located in West Oakland, adjacent to the container terminal we're using for reference. Pipe stuff was our savior here, providing the raw materials for a particularly involved kit bash to match the real life structure. First, we laid out all the parts fresh from Rick's products on the layout to see how much of the building we wanted to model. Then I accurately measured the real structure's roof height and cut down the walls, installing loading dock freight doors into the sides afterward. I then use old photos of it from the early 2000s to match the weathered metal siding it once had before it was painted. I used a variety of hand brushing and airbrushing techniques to match the prototype. Next I used SolidWorks to create the 1960s prefab steel office annex, which I then 3D printed on my cantankerous 3D printer. Once they'd UV cured, I hand painted them and assembled the office. After the office was complete, I built the cold storage annex, where pallets of frozen foods are stored for longer periods of time until the right rail car or truck arrives for pickup. This was a simple model, made from pressed steel sheet textured styrene matching the real life prototype. For these huge areas of pavement, we decided to experiment with 60 thou styrene sheet from Tap Plastics. I usually use a plaster or sculptable for paved areas, but since these needed to be billiard table flat for the container cranes, the plastic route seemed best. It ended up working perfectly. The smooth surface took paint very well and allowed us to put a first layer of asphalt down before masking off the reinforced concrete slab pathways for the MyJack cranes. We did it outside and the light overspray seen in some of the photos was later blended in with an airbrush for weathering. After that dried, we masked for the guidelines and even added some fresh asphalt patches with little boxes of masking tape. The MyJack crane kits from Walther's were a bit fiddly to build, but they came together nicely. My client built most of the crane and then passed them along to me to make the container cradle and then to paint and weather them. I used two different techniques. After both received MyJack orange paint job, I weathered one entirely with hand brushing techniques and the other entirely with airbrushing. Airbrushing saves a lot of time and produces a great look, while the hand brushing looks more grimy and detailed. After the container terminal pavement was done, we moved to scenery work on the cold storage warehouse area, starting with the diesel fuel tanks for refilling the reefers. A layer of sculptable to start was then followed by paint, soil, and a dirty ballast mix of soil and Arizona Rock and Mineral Company ballast. Then we did the rough, crumbling parking lot at the other end of the cold storage lot for the truck trailers. We did this using sculptable. We carved a foundation out for the cold storage annex and then set to work on the foliage layer, 
Using a mix of clem foliage, static grass, and fine foam, we added a bit of life to this area. This the boxes were custom made by me, using brown grocery bags cut to size, assembled, and then crumpled into the dirt. The fence is probably the finest model of chain link I've ever seen, and looks spectacular in photos. It's not too difficult to install, just be sure not to use up all the brass rod stock on each pole, just put it on either end of the etched section, drill a hole, and then hold it in place with glue. Next up was the backdrop. The colors were specifically chosen to match the horizon and sky colors from Oakland on a clear day. The key to a good backdrop is using the same colors you're going to paint your scenery as you are on the backdrop, so it will link the models together. First, the distant hills and the base for the closest hills were painted with Payne's Gray. Then the hundreds of homes were roughed in as an impressionist brushstroke in a variety of colors, each one mixed with a bit of Payne's Gray to give it some atmospheric distance. Getting the Oakland Hills in their variety of eucalyptus, pine, and oak trees was essential. All of my greens were carefully mixed by hand from yellow, blue, and Payne's Gray to tonally match the hazy hills. The end result matches the photographs in real life pretty closely. You can see some of the homes peeking out here and there, and the distinctive tree line with occasional grassy open spaces is very recognizable for the hills in early spring. Final details for this scene are still being added in, but look at what a difference some shipping containers, pallets, forklifts, truck trailers, vehicles, and my custom designed and printed jersey barriers make. We'll be back later this year once my client swings back into his indoor hobbies and we'll watch Oakland, Livermore, and Richmond take shape. This has been Inner Urban Era. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, you can go visit me at patreon.com slash innerurbanera, or follow me on Twitter. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I really enjoy the comments you guys have been leaving on my new videos. And stay tuned for more of Season 2 as it comes out this fall. Thank you very much, and have a great day.